Everybody's always asking, what is your favorite planner? It's probably one of the hottest topics for homeschooling parents. We wanna know what is the best way to organize our homeschool year? What is the fun uh, planner that we like to use? And uh, this used to be my favorite planner and I'm using something else. So I thought I would just share it with you and maybe uh, you might get some inspiration from uh, what I'm deciding to use. And particularly if you are a pen and paper girl, stick around because that's what I'm all about. I have done a variety of things over the years and what I have landed on as being what I find works the best and is the, the the least amount of work for the homeschooling parent, maybe the least amount of headache for the homeschooling parent, is reverse planning. Now, this is the record book. You can see I have many copies of them that I've been using every year. And I got it because it's extremely simple. It's fill in the blank. You just fill in what you um, like to do and like however you wanna fill it in. And sometimes I will, doodle in it sometimes like it's really just a black and white planner with nothing fancy um, <clears throat> and it has worked for me for all of these years now before I get into it I'm not going to talk a lot about it I might make it for another video about how I plan out our year but reverse planning just means that you in your this is really more of a record book as opposed to um, and it even says here record book it's a record book as opposed to a planner. Everyone's always looking for a planner. And what I found is when you write ahead what your plan for the week is, at least for most people I know and for myself, plans don't always come to fruition. And so when you've written down in your planner what you're going to do for the week and you don't do it, there's either whiting it out, crossing things out, adding it again for the next lesson. It gets to be messy. It also gets to be a bit frustrating because you feel like you're failing. And what I prefer to do is in my paper copy of my book, I will just, as, each, as we do each subject, I write down what we've done, the page numbers, what assignments my kids have done, what copy work they've done what reading, what books they've read, what chapters they've read on a day-to-day -day basis. I really love documenting things. I love a paper and pen. I love to write it down in my record book at the end of the day because I feel, I see what we've accomplished. It feels far better to see all the things that we've done and what we, all the page numbers we've read, all the things that we've done, checking them off the list after the fact rather than realizing we haven't done certain things because we do end up leaving things off. For example, today, you know, it's the middle of the afternoon and the kids, you know, we're nearing the end of the school year. We're almost done. We're about a couple of weeks left to our third term and we're just decided to leave history off for today. We will do history tomorrow. But if I had written that in, it just, to me, if you're a perfectionist or a type A personality, it really just, makes your a it looks like you're just not following a plan you're not sticking to your purpose and your plan and it makes your planner look really messy and incomplete so i've really loved doing the reverse planning it really works well for us i do plan out my year in advance um, and by way of i will go through every single subject i will see how many weeks it's going to take to accomplish each one and divide that up between all the terms. If it's just something that is just gonna take one term, I'll, I'll divide that up over the 12 weeks. Or if it's 36 weeks, I'll divide it up over 36 weeks and see how much I'm able to accomplish in that time period. And I, then I have a time frame. I know how much I need to try to get done each week. And I follow that guideline. I usually put that into my computer. I often print it out and put it into my homeschooling binder of all the subjects so that I know that I am somewhat following um, a plan that will lead me to finishing everything on time by the end of the year. But when it comes to recording it in my book, I really love to have a record book and seeing all of our accomplishments on paper. And a lot of people like to do this on the computer, but I really am a pen and paper girl. I really enjoy handwriting things out, checking things off, 
highlighting and doodling little, you know, happy faces and things for big accomplishments or whatever it might be in our calendar, birthdays, little birthday cakes, and so on. Now, why this, I'm not using this particular book. Now, this was just a cheap book that I picked up on Amazon. I think it's about $20, $19.99, something like that. It's worked well, but it worked really well for one student and just a few little subjects that my youngest was doing at the time. But now that they're both going to be having a very fulsome um, year coming up, it was getting hard to squeeze in all the things. I really was only giving me like one or two lines to write things down. And so then I was writing things in short form in my own little code to know what was happening. And I wanted more space to be able to write out more things. But I like the simplicity of this because I didn't need some planners have all these spaces where you're like, you don't use half of it. You don't use half of the ideas. I mean, they're fun little ideas of maybe writing down your thoughts of the day, journaling. Those things I do elsewhere, but in the planner, it just, it, if it doesn't get used to me, it feels like a waste of space. So what I am doing this coming year is I bought this um, sketchbook. It's a hard covered sketchbook with nice, thick, blank pages inside. And I am going to just put in here what I need. And um, this should be large enough. It's fairly thick for the entire year. And uh, this is going to be my planner. So let me just show you. I just put in sort of a sample. I'll be using this coming September. Uh, or Well, if we start, I think the beginning of September is when we've decided to start school in the fall. For now, for the summer months, I'm still using this because there's still space and then we'll start this in September. So let me just show you what, how I'm doing it. It's very simple, but it, um, it gets done what I need for, for it and I can make it suited to whatever I need, which is why I really just want to make my own. Um, these I got, it's from Artist's Loft. It's an imprint there. I don't know if you can see that. I get them from Michael's. They often go on sale. So I think I got this for $6.99. It's a nice hard cover, more durable than some of those soft cover. Um, a nice uh, sewed in spine and uh, nice thick pages so that, you know, when I do color or highlight markers, it doesn't leak through to the other side. So let me show you what this will look like. Okay. So right from the beginning, um, I am just going to print off a calendar from the computer, very easy, cut it out to fit the page. It's just glue sticked in. And then I will write anything in the calendar of like what um, I plan, like any special dates, any appointments, all that kind of stuff. I like to have a calendar in there. And this will be at the beginning of each month. And then very simply, all I have next is I'll have week one, what term it is. Um, I always like to just list all the books that we've read aloud as a family. These are for family read aloud. So I'll also list like what chapters of the Bible we're, we're reading, any morning time books, any other read alouds. I just list it there in order each week. Our to-do list. So if there's any special things that we're particularly working on or what we need to focus on this week. Any projects and assignments, I'll just list them here. And then for each student now, it used to be that they were combined on one page and that is why. So you'll find if you have multiple children, especially if you have more than two, and I only have two, there's limited space for every student. You're cramming things onto tiny little lines where, and now I can dedicate a whole page to one student. So in here, I will list the subjects. And I've approximated how many subjects we will have, and there might be one or two extra that we won't be using. And then these would be the days of the week, like each block would be so Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And I will just write in in each day what we've done, page numbers, um, you know, all that kind of stuff. And I just make a note of all the things they've done each week. And then the same thing for my other daughter. So I've just left enough blocks for all the subjects and then each day of the week. And that is really it. Um, there is often, I haven't put it in here yet, but sometimes I'll also have, and I'll show you in my other book here, I'll make a log. So what I haven't included there yet, but I will, is I just make a little table of the books that they are reading that week as well. So whatever chapters, whatever books they're reading on their own, of course with Eliana, she's reading them with me, but these are books that Olivia had, was reading independently on that particular week. And I will make this chart as well in my um, new planner. 
So that's really all. I know it's super simple, but I just thought I might give you the idea of why not making your own planner or record book because you can really modify it to be exactly what you need. You can dress it up and put stickers in it or do all the kinds of things, you know, that some of the pretty planners do. I love the hardcover um, and the quality of this. It's a really, really nice quality, yet I can design it to be exactly what I need with all of without all the extra pages that I don't use and just seem to be a waste of space. And I can have as much space to write in all the details that I want without feeling like I'm cramming things in because there's just not enough space to suit our needs. So that was my idea. If you're interested in seeing how I plan out my year, comment below, let me know that. I can make a video about that. I have made other videos in the past, although my one video previously from maybe a couple of years ago is very detailed and long and I don't necessarily do all of that anymore. Of course, I've changed, I've modified things that I've done because as I've gotten more, um, a better understanding of what it takes for our homeschool and what our needs are and what our wants are, I've been able to modify how I do things. And so I'd be happy to share that with you. But that's all I have for today. I thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.